Good evening, everyone. I'm Tara Broderick here at RSBN. And I just wanted to come on for a few short moments and tell the story of Master Chief Slabinski, why he's receiving this honor, who he is, and hopefully I can get this in before President Trump comes on stage to present him with the Medal of Honor. Now he's rewarded getting this on getting this Medal of Honor for his actions while leading a team under heavy effective enemy fire in an attempt to rescue a teammate, Petty Officer First Class Neil Roberts during Operation Anaconda in 2002. Now I'm going to put up a picture of him. Now this all started, it happened in March 2002. He was then Senior Chief Slabinski. He led his team to a mountaintop. Now this is a 10,000 foot snow covered mountain in Afghanistan. Enemy is firing at him, they're in a helicopter, they're trying to land on top of this mountain. And while this is happening, this caused Petty Officer Neil Roberts to fall into the enemy fested mountain below. Now. Master Chief Slobinski is aware of his situation, he knows what's going on, and this causes the damaged helicopter to crash in the valley below. So, it's approaching daylight, and without hesitation, he makes a selfless and heroic decision to lead his team back to the mountaintop. Now, fire is coming at him, and they are still able to get back to the mountain. Now, without regard for his own life, he started charging directly toward the enemy's strong point. And so the enemy is firing directly at Slabinski. And I have a quote here I pulled directly from the naval blog that I want to read. And it's just so powerful to me. It says, Slabinski exposed himself to enemy fire on three sides, then moved forward to silence the second position. With bullets piercing his clothing, he repeatedly charged into deadly fire to personally engage the enemy bunker with direct rifle fire, hand grenades, and a grenade launcher on the surrounding enemy position. Then, he skillfully maneuvers his team across the terrain, across this snow-covered mountain to get out of enemy fire. So they're on the other side of this mountain. They're out of enemy fire for, for right now. And so he starts handling his wounded teammates. He starts calling in backup. He starts calling in, um, he'll say, he uh, is continuing to defend his position while he's taking care of his teammates more fire starts happening towards them while they thought they were in this safe position. So now he has to move again, move his team again to a safer position. He carries a wounded teammate through waist deep snow across this terrain while fire is coming at him. He's calling the shots, he's carrying his teammates, and he's still trying to keep his team safe. Now this battle went on for 14 hours long and that is why he's receiving the Medal of Honor honor for his bravery, a bravery displayed in Afghanistan. Now he's the only 12th living service member to be awarded this Medal of Honor for um, his bravery. And his Medal of Honor is an upgrade of the Navy Cross that he's already been previously awarded for these actions. Now Slabinski is a native of Northampton, Massachusetts. He joined the Navy in 1988 after graduating from Radio Man Class A school in San Diego. He completed the basic underwater demolition SEAL course in 1990, and he retired in 2014 as the Director of Naval Special Warfare Safety Assurance and Analysis Program after more than 25 years of service. Throughout his career, he was assigned to both West and East Coast SEAL teams, completed nine overseas deployments and 15 combat tours. Wow, what a hero we have. I'm very excited to watch this ceremony and see what President Trump has to say about him. Definitely, definitely a hero and definitely deserves this honor. And I pulled this directly from the um, White House page and it says, the Medal of Honor is awarded to members of the armed forces who distinguish themselves conspicuously by gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of their own lives above and beyond the call of duty. And that is exactly what he did. And we are so excited to be watching this to, for him to get this Medal of Honor. He truly deserves it. And that's honestly all I wanted to do is come on here and just give a little bit of his background and who he is and exactly why he is receiving this honor. So we're very excited. Um, Joe, do we... Okay. So uh, Joe, just let me know that we do have a shot of the podium. And we want to thank you all.
Britt K. Slabinski, United States Navy, retired. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come before you on this very special occasion from different backgrounds and cultures and expressions of faith toward you. But we all come as Americans and those who love her, those who have sacrificed for her, who have bled for her, and who have died for her. Today, as we gather in our nation's most sacred home, we have the privilege to witness, to celebrate, and to honor an extraordinary naval career and a life that has been set apart and called to service and devotion to this nation and those in it. Today, we are among the most privileged to watch as our nation's highest honor of special trust, achievement, and fidelity is both given and received from our nation's commander in chief to a leader of naval warriors whose opinion was sought, whose sacrifices were selfless, and whose dedication to duty is unparalleled by any standard. Today, we lift up and honor our very own Master Chief, Britt Sablinski, as our nation's Medal of Honor is bestowed upon him. May he also take with him the absolute certainty in knowing that his day is given to this great nation, to our beloved Navy, and to the warriors of Naval Special Warfare, were of value beyond measure. We as his fellow Americans, brother and sister warriors, friends and family alike, collectively ask for your blessing upon our great president, this great Naval warrior, these great military families and all they do, have done, and will continue to do from this day forward on this most solemn occasion, on this sacred ground, we as his teammates say well done. And finally, whether swimming the depths, climbing the highest of mountains, or soaring through the heavens, as we walk that lonely road of faith, may you always go with us. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much, Chaplain. That's beautiful. And thank you to Deputy Secretary of Defense, Patrick Shanahan. Thank you, Patrick. Under Secretary of the Navy, Thomas Modley. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. VA Secretary nominee, do a fantastic job for us, Robert Wilkie, and Congressman Scott Taylor and Brian Mast. Thank you, fellas, very much. Thank you. Members of the Armed Forces and distinguished guests, please sit down. That actually worked out very nicely. <laughs> and join me in officially welcoming Master Chief Britt Slabinski to the White House. Special man, a truly brave person. Today, we pay tribute to Brit's heroic service, and we proudly present him with our nation's highest military honor, and I would go so far as to say our nation's highest honor. Joining Brit today is his son, Bryce. Bryce, thank you very much. A rising senior at a wonderful school known to the world as Ohio State. Great place. That's a great school. Along with Brit's sisters, Brenda and Tika, and Brenda's husband, Tom. Thank you very much for being here. Here as well are Brit's significant other, Christina, and her two children, John and Megan, who we just met in the Oval Office. That's a special place, too. Thank you all for joining us for this really special day and special ceremony. Thank you very much. Finally, we're honored to be joined by several previous Congressional Medal of Honor recipients. Would you please stand? Would you please stand?
Thank you, Father. Very, very special people. Your names and your immortal acts of valor are forever engraved in the memory of our nation. Our nation will always be grateful to you, and you know that. Today, we induct a new name into the world's most exclusive gathering of heroes, and that's exactly what it is. Britt was raised in Northampton, Massachusetts. He became an Eagle Scout by the age of 14. His father was a veteran who served as a frogman in the underwater demolitions group of the U.S. Navy. It was a tough people. While Britt was in junior high, his dad brought him to their reunion. Britt was inspired by their bond of friendship, their stories of service, and their boundless love of country. As soon as he graduated from high school in 1988, Britt enlisted in the Navy to become a SEAL. That means he is a physically very strong person, and that also means he is a mentally very strong person. That's tough. Throughout the grueling months of training, Britt proved himself every single step of the way. In 1990, he graduated the legendary BUDS training course. And he earned that special badge worn only by the bravest few, the SEAL Trident. In 2002, Britt was called to support Operation Enduring Freedom in Afghanistan. In the late evening hours of March 3rd that year, he led an elite team on a combat mission to establish a secure position on the peak of a 10,000-foot mountain known as Takur Gar. Britt and his teammates were preparing to exit the helicopter onto the mountain when their aircraft was struck by a machine gun and machine gun fire like they've never seen before and a rocket-propelled grenade from Al-Qaeda terrorists down below. Not a good feeling. As the helicopter lurched away from the assault, Petty Officer First Class Neil Roberts was flung out of the aircraft. Tremendous, tremendous, horrible thing to witness. And onto the side of the mountain before the helicopter crashed into the valley below. After surviving barely the violent crash, Britt and his team were retrieved by a second helicopter, also, by the way, piloted by very brave people. At this point, Britt received information suggesting their comrade, Neil Roberts, the man thrown out of the helicopter, was probably still alive. The team faced a choice to wait for reinforcements and pretty much safety, or to return immediately to the enemy stronghold in the hope of saving Neil's life. They would be outmanned, outgunned, and fighting uphill on a steep, icy mountain, and every soldier knows you don't want to fight uphill. They learned that at Gettysburg. You don't fight uphill. But they would face freezing temperatures and bitter winds at the highest altitude of battle in the history of the American military. This was the highest point where we ever fought. The odds were not good. They were not in their favor. But Britt and his team didn't even hesitate for a moment. They made their decision. For them, it was an easy one. They went back to that mountain. When their helicopter reached the mountain peak, they jumped out into a furious onslaught of machine gun fire like none of them had ever seen before. Britt and his teammate, Sergeant John Chapman, charged uphill toward the enemy, where John was shot after clearing a bunker. Britt continued to engage the enemy 
repeatedly exposing himself to horrendous fire. Two of his other teammates, Stephen Turbo Tobas and Brett Morganti, both suffered very, very serious leg injuries. Brit helped them to safety and called in airstrikes as continuous fire drove them ever further down the face of the mountain, got worse and worse, more and more dangerous. He kept going. In a treacherous descent, Brit and his men carried Turbo through the snow. At one point, they fashioned a makeshift harness out of their gun straps to hoist Turbo down a 13-foot cliff. In itself, treacherous, because if you miss that little area, they go down the mountain. There's no stopping them. When they could go no further, Brit tended to the wounded and coordinated their escape until his team was finally evacuated from enemy territory. Seven of the brave men who fought with Brit are here with us today, and maybe they'll stand up as I call their name. Petty Officer, Second Class, Brett Morgante. Pretty dangerous place, huh? Way to go, Brett. Chief Warrant Officer, Kyle Soderberg. Thank you, Kyle. Petty Officer, Second Class, Stephen Tobaz. Thanks, Stephen. Chief Warrant Officer, Al Mack. Thank you. Sergeant Christopher Cunningham. Master Sergeant Eric Stebner. A Master Chief Petty Officer still on active duty is quietly not with us today. I just want to thank you all. Unbelievable acts of bravery. Thank you very much. Thank you, folks. Thank you very much. Incredible. Today, we also remember the brave soldiers who gave their lives on that mountain. Technical Sergeant John Chapman, Corporal Matthew Commons, Specialist Mark Anderson, Sergeant Bradley Cross, Senior Airman Jason Cunningham, Technical Sergeant Philip Spivak, and of course, Petty Officer First Class Neil Roberts, who met a horrible death for whom these events are now known. It's called the Battle of Roberts Ridge. Incredible event. To the Gold Star family members of those heroes who are here today, please stand up. Please stand up. Please. It's an honor to have you accept our nation's profound sorrow and a deep love and everlasting gratitude. These were incredible, incredible men. And you can be proud that they were in your family. And they are looking down right now, and they are very, very proud of you. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Thank you. To Britt and to all of the men of Roberts Ridge, you waged a fierce fight against the enemies. And these really have become the enemies of America and the enemies of all civilization. Through your actions, you demonstrated that there is no love more pure and no courage more great than the love and courage that burns in the hearts of American patriots. We are free because warriors like you are willing to give their sweat, their blood, and if they have to, their lives for our great nation. Britt, you went on to serve many more years in the U.S. Navy before finally retiring. 
in 2014. Today, he continues his life of serving by volunteering with the Navy SEAL Foundation and on behalf of Gold Star families, special, special, incredible families. And as one of his fellow service members testifies, he is an amazing father to Bryce, who, like his dad, is now an Eagle Scout. Britt wants the country to know that for him, the recognition he is about to receive is an honor that falls on the whole team. He wants you folks to know that, on the whole team. On every American warrior who fought the forces of terror on that snowy Afghan ridge, each of them has entered the eternal chronicle of American valor and American bravery. Britt, we salute you. We thank you. We thank God for making you a United States SEAL. We love our Navy SEALs. They're very special, very incredible people. It's now my tremendous privilege to present to you the Congressional Medal of Honor. And I'd like the military aide to come forward and please read the citation. Thank you. The President of the United States, in the name of the Congress, takes pleasure in presenting the Medal of Honor to Senior Chief Special Warfare Operator, Sea, Air, and Land, Britt K. Slabinski, United States Navy, for service as set forth in the following. For conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty, while assigned to a joint task force in support of Operation Enduring Freedom, in the early morning of March 4, 2002, Senior Chief Special Warfare Operator Slabinski led a reconnaissance team to its assigned area atop a 10,000-foot snow-covered mountain. Their insertion helicopter was su suddenly riddled with rocket-propelled grenades and small arms fire from previously undetected enemy positions. The crippled helicopter lurched violently and ejected one teammate onto the mountain before the pilots were forced to crash land in the valley far below. Senior Chief Slabinski boldly rallied his five remaining team members and marshaled supporting assets for an assault to rescue their stranded teammate. During reinsertion, the team came under fire from three directions, and one teammate started moving uphill toward an enemy strong point. Without regard for his own safety, Senior Chief Slabinski charged directly toward enemy fire to join his teammate. Together, they fearlessly assaulted and cleared the first bunker they encountered. The enemy then unleashed a hail of machine gun fire from a second hardened position only 20 meters away. Senior Chief Slabinski repeatedly exposed himself to deadly fire to personally engage the second enemy bunker and orient his team's fires in the furious close quarters firefight. Proximity made air support impossible, and after several teammates became casualties, the situation became untenable. Senior Chief Slabinski maneuvered his team to a more defensible position, directed airstrikes in very close proximity to his team's position, and requested reinforcement. As daylight approached, accurate enemy mortar fire forced the team further down the sheer mountainside. Senior Chief Slabinski carried a seriously wounded teammate through deep snow and led a difficult trek across precipitous terrain while calling in fire on the enemy, which was engaging the team from the surrounding ridges. Throughout the next 14 hours, Senior Chief Slabinski stabilized casualties and continued the fight against the enemy until the hill was secured and his team was extracted. By his undaunted courage, bold initiative, leadership, and devotion to duty, Senior Chief Slabinski reflected great credit upon himself and upheld the highest traditions of the United States Naval Service.
And as we close today, let us close with one final prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, those of us who have had the privilege to witness this very special ceremony are reminded once again that we serve among the greatest of warriors, among the greatest of navies, within the greatest of nations, only because of the brave few who continue to raise their hand in the protection of this great nation and those in it from those who would wish us harm. Men such as our very own Master Chief Britt Sablinski, who personifies that most cherished of virtues that we all strive for, which is courage. Courage for when our moment comes and we look into the abyss and we promise ourselves and others on our honor to do our best, to do our duty for God and for our country, and in so doing forge an unbreakable bond in the heat of battle in the furnace of affliction, which strengthens, molds, and galvanizes that bond only to come forth as pure gold. And in this case, gold in the form of a naval trident. And as we close this ceremony today, may Master Chief Sablinski take with him the certainty of knowing that his days spent in service to this nation and the pursuit of freedom for all were of value beyond measure, as well as those virtues and values which delivered him to this very moment. May it never be far from our thoughts, the price that he and many others have paid in the pursuit of that freedom. And may that inspiration be breathed into each one of us and live on in those and the generations to follow especially to our brother and sister warriors, teammates, friends, and family of Naval Special Warfare, as we collectively wish our teammate and his family Godspeed. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain in your seats until the president has departed.